Hello, everyone. It's Shakespeare Day. It's still this week. Um, it's Saturday, so this is my last day to get this in. Um, I was just doing live chats and was reminded that I owe you guys some verse. Uh, my apologies. Um, but it's so fun. I'm, I'm glad that we're doing this today. Um, here we go, guys. We are in Act 5. And uh, I think I said in one of the earlier... Uh, uh, videos that it's important when you produce Macbeth to not have a bunch of fancy sets. Shakespeare didn't use a bunch of fancy sets. Uh, and when you do, when you have a bunch of fancy sets, act five slows down to a crawl because every scene in act five, there's a, just a bunch of short scenes and they're jumping around from England to, to Macbeth's castle, then out to uh, the Scotland with the English forces massing, and it just jumps all over the place. And if you have to change the sets out, it slows down to a crawl. But if you don't have sets, Act 5 can do what it wants to do, which is basically be like a runaway freight train. Uh, it, 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 you want to go quick between these scenes. Uh, and so, uh, things are not looking good in the Macbeth household. Um, uh, <laughs> Uh, in the in the in the scene that we did last time, Angus says this wonderful speech, one of my favorites. Now does he feel talking about Macbeth? Macbeth. Now does he feel his secret murders sticking on his hands? Now minutely revolts upbraid his faith breach. Those he commands move only in command, nothing in love. Now does he feel his title hang loose upon him like a giant's robe upon a dwarfish thief. Uh, I got to do that in my first production of Macbeth. That was my favorite moment. I played a bunch of little roles, but I got Angus, and I got what I think is just a great little speech about a tyrant's last days. Uh, and so, in this next scene, we actually get to see the tyrant. And we can see that Angus is absolutely right. Um, and Macbeth is going mad in his own, in his own castle. Uh, and he is... Uh, all, of, all of his friends, all of his supporters, all of the thanes are leaving him to join with Macduff's forces. And he's left with... Only a few servants left in his castle and uh, soldiers who can't, can't get out uh, of the castle to, to get to the other side. Uh, and only, the only people uh, who are with him are the ones who can't leave. And uh, he is going crazy. Um, and I think that I'll just read this scene. Uh, I'm going to do all the roles. Uh, there's not that many. Uh, and it's just basic, it's basically Macbeth and his servants. And one of that servant is a doctor, who I will do in kind of an English accent, just so that you can know that it's the doctor talking. Uh, and uh, it's a pretty simple scene to understand. It's just basically seeing that, that uh, Macbeth is going mad. Uh, and uh, he's in a tight place. So here we go. And it starts with Macbeth. Bring me no more reports. Let them fly all. Till Burnham Wood remove to Dunzen and I cannot taint with fear. What? That's referring to the witch's prophecy that until the forest around his castle gets up and moves, that he, he, he's not going to be overthrown from his kingdom. What's the boy, Malcolm? Was he not born of woman? The spirits that know all mortal consequence have pronounced me thus. Fear not, Macbeth. No man that's born of woman shall e'er have power over thee. Then fly, false thanes, and mingle with the English epicures. The mind I sway by and the heart I bear shall never sag with doubt nor shake with fear. And then a servant comes in, and he's shock white. He's panicking. And, and Macbeth says, The devil damn thee black, thou cream-faced loon. Where hast thou got that goose look? There is ten thousand geese, villain, soldiers, sir. 
Go prick thy face and o'er red thy fear, thou lily-livered boy. What soldiers, patch, death of thy soul, those linen cheeks of thine are counselors to fear. What soldiers, wayface, the English force so please you? Take thy face hence, and the servant leaves. Seton, I am sick at heart when I behold. Seton, I say, this push will cheer me ever or deceit me now. I have lived long enough. My way of life has fallen into the seer, the yellow leaf, and that which should accompany old age as honor, love, obedience, troops of friends, I must not look to have, but in their stead, Curses, not loud, but deep. Mouth on her breath, which the poor heart would vain deny and dare not. Seton, what is your grace's pleasure? What news more? All is confirmed, my lord, which was reported. Oh, fight till from my bones my flesh be hacked. Give me my armor. Tis not needed yet. I'll put it on. Send out more horses. Stir the country round. Hang those that talk of fear. Give me mine armor. How does thy patient, doctor? Not so sick, my lord, as she is uh, troubled with thick coming fancies that keep her from her rest. Cure her of that. Canst thou not minister to a mind diseased? Pluck from the memory a rooted sorrow, raise out the written troubles of the brain, and with some sweet oblivious antidote, Cleanse the stuffed bosom of that perilous stuff which weighs upon the heart. Therein the patient must minister to himself. Throw physic to the dogs. I'll none of it. Come, put mine armor on. Give me my staff. Seaton, send out. Doctor, the things fly from me. Come, sir, dispatch. If thou couldst, doctor, cast the water of my land. Find her disease and purge it to a sound and pristine health. I would applaud thee to the very echo which should applaud again. Pull it off, I say. What rhubarb, senna, and what purgative drug would scour these English heads? Hearest thou of them? I, my good lord, your royal preparation makes us hear something. Bring it after me. I will not be afraid of death and bane till Burnham Wood come to Dunsinan. And Macbeth leaves, leaving the doctor alone on stage. And the doctor says, Were I from Dunsinan away and clear, Prophet again should hardly draw me here. I hope that that was clear. Um, so Macbeth is talking to multiple people in the room. Uh, he's he's telling you know put my armor off take my uh, put my armor on no take it off uh, he's panicking uh, because uh, the English force is at his doorstep and it is massive and he has almost no one in the castle he maybe has a few hundred soldiers to defend against this massive force that's outside his walls and he is holding on to the prophecy of these witches, which, which are telling him, A, that he is safe until the forest around his castle gets up and moves, and B, that no man that is born of woman can do him any harm. But looking outside his castle walls, it's uh, huh, there's about 10,000 soldiers that want him dead. Uh, so he's freaking out. Okay, until next time, guys.